Today, I'm going to share with you the top five biggest mistakes I see students making in their LSAT prep and how to avoid them. Because I've been teaching the LSAT since 2005, I've worked with literally thousands of students, and I see so many students making the same big mistakes in their LSAT prep. I want to show you how to avoid making those mistakes so you can get the highest LSAT score possible in the least time possible. So without further ado, here they are. Mistake number one, underestimating just how more, much work the LSAT's going to take. Back when I was studying for the LSAT, I would get those huge books of LSAT exams, each one containing roughly a thousand LSAT questions. So I knew there was a lot of practice material available to me to study from. Now that the LSAT material is all online, it's not quite as obvious, but there are a ton of LSAT practice questions you can study from and work on. The more of them you do, the more likely you are to see the patterns underlying the LSAT, the commonalities between different LSAT questions and their underlying methods of reasoning. The LSAT score increase that you get is going to be a function of, to some extent, how many questions you do. And so make sure you're getting yourself as many of those real LSAT questions as possible. The best place to get them is LSAC's Law Hub platform, where you can do the exams in the exact same format you'll be experiencing on LSAT test day. But don't sell yourself short by just taking some hand-me-down book from a friend or a colleague or a family member. The LSAT is too important to be left to chance from some hand-me-down book or used book. Instead, you want to get yourself as many real LSAT questions as possible. It's worth the investment. Mistake number two is not putting in the time. And that means not putting in the hours in the day, not putting in the number of hours in the week, or in on the flip side, putting too much time into your prep because of course you don't want to burn out. And so you want to find that happy medium. An hour a week is not going to be enough. Five hours a week probably won't be enough either. I typically recommend at least 10 to 15 hours per week minimum to make sure you're, you're making forward progress in your LSAT prep journey. On the flip side though, you don't want to put in more than five, six hours a day because you don't want to burn out. So you don't want to study for 40 plus hours a week. It's just too much. You need time to sleep on it. You need time to let the lessons sink in. The LSAT is not a test of memorization. It's a skills-based test. And what that means is that practice is important, but you also need to take breaks to let those lessons learned percolate in the back of your mind. And it can be helpful to have something else going on in your life, whether it's a part-time job or volunteer work at minimum. Mistake number three is not putting in enough months into your LSAT prep journey. Yes, if you are studying for the LSAT full-time with no other obligations, you might be able to knock out the LSAT in just two to three months. But if you're working or if you're in school, it might take closer to five to six months to reach your fullest LSAT potential. What I recommend is choosing a test date, starting early, and getting to work. Mistake number four, a lot of people, especially if they're on the lower end of the scoring spectrum, they'll treat the LSAT like some dumb obstacle standing in the way of their legal career journey, and that the LSAT, they'll think it doesn't test anything important. Nothing could be farther from the truth. You can certainly make the argument the LSAT gets a little bit too much weight in the admissions process. I'm not going to disagree with you there. But at the same time, what the, the skills the LSAT tests do relate to what you'll do in law school. We're talking about legal reasoning ability, the ability to engage in critical reasoning, critical analysis, deductive reasoning. These are all things that attorneys do as well when they're looking at cases, and they're certainly related to what you're doing in law school when you're looking at fact patterns related to a case. And so I find the students who do best on the LSAT are the ones who treat the LSAT as a challenge, yes, but as the opportunity to learn something new, to develop the skills that are going to help them in law school and over the course of their legal career. And so if you can develop an appreciation for the exam and recognize that the test makers are actually doing something important and useful when they're designing those tricky LSAT questions, you'll get a lot more out of the process because you're going to enjoy the process of studying for the LSAT. That might seem weird now, but the more you do it, the more you'll come to appreciate it. And once you get good at the LSAT, you'll actually find it fun sometimes at least. Mistake number five is burning through valuable practice material. If you've been at the LSAT for a while, you probably know that there are nearly 100 real, actual, official, released LSAT exams. And yes, that might seem like a lot of practice material, but you will get through them fast if you just churn and burn. What I mean by this is, if you're just taking exam after exam after exam, measuring your progress, being happy or sad about the result, then moving on to the next, before you know it, you're going to burn through all 100 exams and you'll have nothing new to study from. You don't want to take exams on consecutive days, especially because you don't want to burn out. Instead, I recommend two exams a week, maybe three at most, but you want to make sure that you're getting the full value out of those exams 
by reviewing them in depth. And I've developed a framework for reviewing LSAT questions called the Socratic Review Method. It's the cornerstone of my LSAT prep courses. It's the cornerstone of my live online classes via Zoom and on-demand video lessons, small group coaching sessions, and one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. You can check out the links below the video to find out more and to book a call with me and my team. We'd be glad to help you out. And why is review important? It's because it's letting you get those key takeaways from the exam questions you're completing so that you can learn to avoid making the same mistakes again, because of course, that's what it's all about. Anyway, folks, that's all for now. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do me a favor and share it with someone who needs to see it. And in the meantime, I'll wish you all the best and take care.